On the news, PDP declines to sign peace accord ahead of Edo governorship poll. Nigerian Air Force airstrike kills 28 terrorists in Niger State. And President Tinubu approves 108 billion naira for states to tackle floods and erosion. That's why we join us on the news on TV360 Nigeria. I'm Tamilore Akinkolie. In a surprising turn of events, the People's Democratic Party PDP has refused to sign the peace accord ahead of Edo State governorship election scheduled for September 21st. The announcement was made by former Edo State General Abdusalami Abubakar, who disclosed this at the venue of the peace accord signing in Bini. According to the former head of state, Governor Obaseki informed him that the PDP would not sign the agreement, citing certain unresolved concerns. However, no further explanation was given at the event by the PDP chairman present. Governor Obaseki had earlier expressed doubt about his party's participation in the peace accord during a meeting with the National Peace Committee, also led by General Abubakar. The governor alleged that security forces had been biased towards the all Progressive Congress APC, accusing the police of arresting key members of the PDP. It said that until these party members were released, the PDP could not trust the security apparatus to ensure a fee and fair election. Meanwhile, other major political parties, including the APC and Labour Party, signed the peace accord along with their respective candidates. Now joining us now to provide deeper insight into these developments is political affairs analyst and legal practitioner Liberos Oshoma. Thank you for your time, Mr. Oshoma. Now, what do you make of the PDP's decision to refuse signing the peace accord, especially so close to the election? Yeah, <laughs> it, is, um, it is not um, strange. We've had instances where when APC were in opposition in instances like this, they also raised their uh, concerns about uh, signing peace accord you remember the Oshun election uh, apc complained bitterly about the outcome of um, the then federal government uh, of pdp and the attitude of the security operatives the police the dss you know on allegations of arresting key party members so uh, this is not the first time we've seen you know similar development uh, especially uh, considering the fact that Obaseki also, uh, his uh, party is playing a major role and is instrumental to the emergence of uh, the party uh, governorship candidate. So uh, you cannot uh, dismiss his misgivings. You cannot dismiss his, uh, his um, fears. But that said, um, there have been accusations from other stakeholders that the PDP also has uh, consistently um uh, being involved and engaged in in violence in some areas and i remember uh some of the persons that were arrested including the local government chairman the allegations which are still in the realm of allegation is to the fact that you know he led talks to harass you know some party members mind you a police officer had been um, killed in the course of all of this campaign so i do not also wish or expect the police to fold their hands uh, because um, a governor had raised an uh, alarm or raised complaint. Obaseki uh, had once threatened that if anything happens to his uh, men that um, the state would burn. I, I didn't expect that from a sitting you know, governor who's supposed to be a chief security of officer. No one has monopoly of violence saying that a state would burn and all of those things. But that said, um, I, apart from just signing the peace accord, I also want to see a situation where the peace committee is actually able to melt out, you know, punishment for people that violate a peace, the terms of the peace accord, because it is not enough to just sign peace accord. After signing peace accord, what if the event that the parties that sign peace accord, because politicians will sign peace accord and still deploy their thugs to go snatch ballot papers and cause mayhem, when this peace accord is violated with impunity, what becomes the, the consequences? We should be able to see a situation where there will be that synergy 
a cohesion between um, the peace accord committee, the police, and the security. And then the security should try as much as that can, they can, you know, to rise above, you know, biases. Yes, it is enough to say the state is involved. The state has a security apparatus and arm that had been dissolved. But the federal government also, it's um, the government of the federal, the federal government also, the ruling party at the center also is involved in the states and they control the police, they control the other security apparatus. So what happens if these operatives are actually used to, to influence the outcome? So that's where we need to strike a balance actually. All right. Thank you for your time and thought, Mr. Oshoma. We hope to get a free and fair election in Edo State. Now to security matters. In a brazen attack early Thursday morning, armed bandits blocked the BC Guzao Funtua Highway in Zafara State, kidnapping an unspecified number of travelers. The incident has left many stranded and raised serious security concerns in the region. According to reports, the bandits stormed the highway in the early hours, establishing a roadblock near the Tazami exit. Now, eyewitnesses describe a large-scale operation involving approximately 50 motorcycles, each carrying three armed individuals. The attack has not been limited to a single location, because reports also indicate that the Magazu Kucheri Road, another vital link between Gusau and Funtua, was also blocked by the bandits, further complicating the situation. Now, in response to the crisis, ASP Yazidi Abubakar, spokesperson for the Zamfara State Police Command, confirmed that additional troops, particularly operating from the Nigerian Police Mobile Squad, has been deployed to the affected areas. And in a significant development in Nigeria's ongoing fight against terrorism, the Nigerian Air Force NAF has conducted a series of precision attacks in Niger State, resulting in neutralization of at least 28 terrorists. The operation took place on Wednesday in Baza community of Shiroro local government area. According to the group Captain Kabiru Ali, Deputy Director of Information and Public Relations for NAF, the airstrike was carried out in response to a request for air support from ground forces. Upon arrival at the scene, NAF aircraft observed over 100 terrorists engaged in a fierce firefight with friendly forces. Now, 28 bodies have been recovered from the targeted area as NAF continues its effort to clear the area, with report of more terrorist casualties, weapons and burnt motorcycles still being processed. Now, Group Captain Ali assured the public that NAF will continue to conduct air operations both independently and in collaboration with ground forces to eliminate or threat to the nation's peace, prosperity, and security. President Bola Tinobu has approved 108 billion naira for 36 state of the federation to tackle flooding and other natural disasters. This was disclosed on Wednesday by Vice President Kashim Shatima at the State House in Abuja, the nation's capital. Receiving the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Speaker Abbas Tadijin, the Vice President described the situation in Meduguri as a national calamity. On his part, Tajidin commiserated with Shatima and Tinubu and the government and the people of Brno State, assuring that the National Assembly will provide support for the affected community. And we, the National Assembly, will look more through to see what kind of support we'll be able to give to the people affected. Uh, we are very sorry, Excellency, for what has happened. We share your pains, we share your concerns. We are together in this from the beginning to the end. We shall allow it to come to pass and people will go, go back to their normal lives and businesses uh, as if it has not happened. Because we and you will make sure that we provide all the pilots needed for them to actually regain their uh, means of livelihood. Thank you, Excellency. Please compare our sincere concerns to the governor and to the people of Burma. There's hardly any part of this nation that has not been operated by these uh, roading incidences. But, uh, the president has shown the deal, the willingness and commitment to partner with the state schools addressing those issues. Recently, he approved the release of 3 billion naira to each state of the federation to address some of these challenges 
all parts of the Federation should have a sense of buy-in and belonging. So we cannot thank you for your stellar leadership in the National Assembly, in spite of having nearly 70% of the members as newly sworn in members who are able to keep the plug plan. There is a lot of stability in the House of Representatives. And we have to commend you for providing that leadership. Thank you. Uh, we wish you well. Thank you. And inshallah, we are one of the fulcrums of our democratic journey, the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary. A harmonious relationship between the three strands are very essential to sustain democracy in this country. Amid an increasing number of m -post cases in the country, the Nigeria Center for Disease and Prevention, NCDC, has unveiled plans to boost the nation's capacity for testing the disease and managing the public health threat. Now, according to NCDC's director, Jide Idris, authorities are also ensuring that long-standing health challenges like Lassa fever and yellow fever uh, remains at the forefront of their intervention. TV Tracy's correspondent, Okwayemi Owosheni, has more details in this next report. About 1,031 suspected cases of MPOX have been reported in 35 states, and the Federal Capital Authority with 67 confirmed cases in 23 states and the FCT. This coincides with the increase in the number of suspected Lassa fever cases nationwide to 7,973, with 982 confirmed. In response, the NCDC plans to expand laboratory capacity across the country. The Director General of the Center says the NCDC has intensified cross-border surveillance and provision of medical countermeasures for response. Massa fever is on the decline, but it is on the decline because we have been advised to deactivate the EOC. But again, we also know that this is a seasonal and very soon the suit are coming up. We are expecting last fever to be on the rise again in the next couple of weeks. But in that again, we peak again towards the beginning of next year. So right now, we should start preparing uh, people, uh, masses again, to ensure that we can put down all those cases, I mean, all the, all the strategies that we need for preventing this so that we do not record as many cases as recorded in the current year and the previous years. And of course, in preparing again, this is a general thing again, we stockpile uh, materials we need for, for whatever it is where this is of course in terms of medi medicines, in terms of PPEs, in terms of uh, I mean, whatever materials we need, like medical countermeasures. We increase our public awareness. So, in the next couple of weeks now, we are going to increase specific public awareness with respect to Lassa fever and meningitis so that this will be sustained so that we don't we have to prepare the minds of the people again. Addressing the challenges of disease testing, the NCDC says the gap necessitates an expansion of laboratory capacity across the country to ensure timely detection and effective containment. The NCDC DG also cautions against losing sight of other public health threats in Nigeria. Whatever response we are adopting, it has to be very, very collective and comprehensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go with, go with not east. And to the north I think Kaduna, to boost the laboratories there to increase their capability to be able to detect mpox so that people you don't have to carry samples over long distances that's all in addition again we are training those staff the staff again in those laboratories in those days in, to be able to detect this thing my brother is awareness awareness creation and that's why part of this will be talking about how mpox is presented uh, uh what mpox is how it is presented how what we can do to prevent the, uh, the transmission we will continue to do that as we go along. But specifically again, uh, we're talking about cholera. So we have 21,938 um, confirmed cases, um, which accounts for 60.7% of the confirmed suspected cases of diphtheria. This is also broken down into laboratory confirmed um, cases of 385 making up 1.8% of the confirmed cases. Epidemiologically linked is 220, making up 1.0%. And clinically compatible, compatible cases are 21,333, which accounts for 97.2%. 
As Nigeria grapples with these multiple health challenges, the NCDC urged citizens to remain vigilant, adopt preventive measures, support public health initiatives, and most importantly, seek professional medical help rather than self-medicating. Okpayemi Owoshini, T360 News, Lagos. The wife of the Lagos State Governor Abijo Kesson Olu has called on women to adopt modesty and prudence in their spending, especially in the light of the current economic challenges facing the country. Speaking at the 24th Committee of Wives of Lagos State Officials Council Women's Conference on Wednesday, she stressed the importance of living intentionally and adjusting to the realities of the present financial situation. She urged women to abandon extravagant lifestyles, prioritizing what truly matters in managing household and community resources. First discussion under this topic was presented by Mrs. Temitope Okunu on the role of women in environmental protection and conservation efforts. She highlighted the link between climate change and women's health, particularly in rural areas. Women in these areas face increased exposure to waterborne diseases, poor quality, plastic pollution, and harmful chemicals in agriculture, which impacts their fertility and well-being. She also underscored the detrimental impact of plastic pollution on women, children, and infants, particularly highlighting the potential transmission of toxic substances from mother to child, which may impede the child's development. Our goal remains the same, to inspire, empower, and equip women with the tools to face today's challenges and succeed. This brings to me an important message I would like to leave with you all. We are at a crucial point in our nation's history where the need for prudent and intentional living has never been been more urgent. It is essential that we embrace the reality of the present economic situation, not only in Nigeria, but globally. The era of extravagant lifestyle is over. We must adjust, prioritize what truly matters, and lead by example in our homes and communities. Agriculture, you know, empowerment is one of the ways to go. You know, you must be able to learn a skill. You must be able to, to have, you know, a new order. You must be able to learn a trade. There must be something that you can do that you can do differently as a woman. There must be something. There must be one skill, one knowledge, one innovation, one idea that you must continue to bake and you must continue to bath every time. We're going to short break here, but still to come, Nigerian government unveils $100 billion creative economy. Details of the story after this break. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And wait, do you know there's a way to find out if these things he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the GoTo app. If you want to know how our commonwealth is being expended by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by other people in Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, that is true. <laughs> of course, I told you. 
Welcome back now with a quick recap of our top stories. The People's Democratic Party PDP has refused to sign the peace accord ahead of the head of state governorship election on September 21. The former head of state Abdus Salami Abubakar announced this during the peace accord signing in Bini, stating that the governor Obaseki Godwin informed him of PDP's decision due to unresolved security concerns. Governor Obaseki had earlier expressed doubt about the security apparatus, accusing police of bias and arresting key PDP members, which he claimed undermined trust in the electoral process. Despite this, other major political parties, including the Labour Party and the APC, signed the peace accord with their candidates. We also informed you that the Nigerian Air Force NAF has successfully conducted series of precision attacks, neutralizing at least 28 terrorists in Niger State. The operation took place on Wednesday in the Basa community of Shiroro local government area following a request for air support from ground forces. According to Group Captain Kabiru Ali, NAF's Deputy Director of Information and Public Relations, the airstrike targeted over 100 terrorists who were engaged in heavy combat with friendly forces. So far, 28 bodies have been recovered from the targeted area, with further report of more casualties, weapons and boat motorcycles still being processed. Now, in case you missed any of the news bulletin or for more updates, you can catch us on Lima Sport TV and AVO TV. Or log on to our website on wwwtv 36 You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram and YouTube at tv 36 Nigeria. Or download our mobile app on Google Play Store, Huawei App Gallery and Apple Store. On Facebook, we're at TV360 Online. Opinions are free. Facts are sacred. The truth is universal. How, in practical terms, can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? Because when you go into public office, you must be ready to answer to the people. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad Basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa Forest. On DG360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians are saying in this uh, part of the world. A new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for any governor to look for grant for ranching. DG360, dissecting the issues. It's time for business news. Let's join Joy Uche Jemo is on standby in the world of business. Joy, what is the latest? Thank you, Tammy. Well, the Nigerian government has announced an ambitious plan to generate $100 billion annually and create over 2 million jobs from Nigeria's creative economy. This bold initiative was unveiled by the Minister of Arts, Culture and the Creative Economy, Hanatu Musa Musawa, during a roundtable event with investors in Lagos on Wednesday, September 11, 2024. Speaking at the event held in Ikoi, the minister presented an eight-point plan and roadmap for the sector, emphasizing that if fully implemented, the strategy has the potential to meet these targets. Despite the creative industry's vast potential, Musawa lamented that it only contributes $5 billion to the economy. There are over 1,000 festivals in Nigeria, but what I can tell you is that it will capture the most significant festivals cut across the breadth of um, Nigeria to make sure that every single region or every single state, if possible, is um, captured in terms of you know, their cultural expression within the festivals. We are working closely 
with the NCAC and other uh, organisations um, uh, within the spectrum of government to ensure that we do what we can in terms of capturing those festivals. Those festivals are key because it's important for tourism, it's important for cultural diplomacy, it's, all, it's important for our own um, uh, domestic tourism and our own unity and uh, discovery of what our identity is as a people that is quite diverse. So we are working, like I said, um, as much as we can with the relevant parties and partners. It is not just enough to pass through, it's more important to coordinate and ensure that this opportunity can generate income for the country which is what everybody is now trying to do. Nigeria is broke. There's no hard and fast rule about it. But Nigeria is full of potentials. Potentials in themselves don't turn into opportunity. You need to convert it. The process of conversion is why we are gathered here. It can't happen without the private sector on PPP basis. It can't happen without funding. Government doesn't have the fund because we just said they are broke. So who has the funding? Private sector. Let's move to them and let them see what they can offer. We'll take a short break and return with stock market reports. Welcome back. Nigeria's equities market rose by 0.32% thanks to Nestle flour mills and FBN Holdings that led the league on the major advances on the Lagos boards. Now in the aggregate, 119 NGX listed equities participated in trading, ending on a positive note with 27 gainers against 22 losers. Now FBN Holdings led the gainers with a 24 uh, with a 10% share price appreciation, followed by Coverting Offshore Support Group, also sold by 10%, adding a bit of extra sparkle to the trading day. Now, by the end of today's trading session on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, a whooping 390 million shares were exchanged through 9,615 transactions, racking up an impressive market value of 7.9 billion naira. Now, it's been quite a lively day on the stock market. Now, on the global front, the vibe was mostly positive with the UK's FTSE and Japan's Nikkei keeping their bullish streaks alive. Meanwhile, the US Dow Jones took a detour into beer country, ending the day on a down note. Now, in the foreign in exchange market, the Naira dipped further, trading at 1,665 Naira against the US dollar on the black market. The British pound is valued at 2,190 Naira, while the Euro stands at 1,810 Naira on the black market. That's the business and stock market update. Tammy, over to you for the rest of the news. Thank you for that update, Joy. Now, on the global scene, the, Sec the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, has described South South Corporation as a transformative power of unity and solidarity among developing nations. Guterres said this in a speech to commemorate the International Day for South South Corporation on Thursday, September 12. He said that South South Corporation does not reduce the responsibility of all their nations to help tackle global inequalities. It does not replace North South Corporation but strong South-South partnership along with triangular cooperation are crucial to building a better future for all. He added that this partnership can advance a fairer, more inclusive global financial system and respond to the challenges faced by developing countries. On the United Nations Day for South-South cooperation, we celebrate the transformative power of unity and solidarity among developing nations. We remember that only together can countries leverage multilateral support and realize shared prosperity. South-South cooperation does not reduce the responsibility of wealthier nations to help tackle global inequalities. It does not replace North-South cooperation. But strong South-South partnerships, along with triangular cooperation, are crucial to building a better future for all. These partnerships can advance a fairer, more inclusive global financial system that responds to the challenges faced by developing countries. They can help unlock the power of digitalization, data, and science-backed solutions for sustainable development. They can Im help improve the quality of life today and for future generations, building resilience and empowering women and young people. The Summit of the Future in September is an opportunity to reaffirm our commitment to South-South and triangular cooperation embracing solidarity and mutual support. By pooling resources, know-how and experience, we can create a more equitable world for all. 
And finally, on sport, Nigeria's Jay Tigris has punched their way into the semi finals of the 2024 Afro Basket Under 18 Women's Championship in Pretoria, South Africa. According to reports, the Jay Tigris brushed aside their female counterpart from North Africa 66 51 on Wednesday. Nigeria won the first quarter 24 13 and maintained the lead as the teams went to an halftime with scores 37 23 for Jay Tigris. Egypt's effort to get back into the game failed until the Buzzer. It was a sensational comeback for Nigeria as this was the second game against Egypt within one week. And that wraps up our bulletin on news now. Many thanks for watching. I'm Tamilore Akinkoli. I'll see you again next time.